Okay, um, I think uh, we can uh, start already. Um, just just uh, for the so that you know that all the session, the whole session is going to be recorded and the, uh, the video is going to be available on the resource page um, on the ververica.com. Uh, also, the slides uh, are going to be um, made available and the link uh, will be posted in the chat uh, in the chat uh, channel. In, in Zoom, also, uh, it's there, they, they will be available uh, at the same resource page at ververica.com. Um, so just um, so so that you may you may so my name is um, David Vesakovic. I'm a software engineer at uh, Ververica. Um, and today I, am, I, I would like to present you uh, how we can detect patterns in event streams with Flink SQL, or in other words, uh, I, would like you to, I would like to present you the, the effort of um, integrating uh, Flink CEP library with SQL uh, with, uh, with the support, uh, so basically just adding the support of a match recognized clause to, to SQL. Mm. One uh, additional general remark, um, I, I will make um, two or, or three uh, breaks during the presentation, so if you would like to ask any uh, questions, uh, feel free to post, uh, post them either in the Q&A uh, channel or in the chat, uh, and I will try to, to answer them. Um, I, I will say uh, when, uh, when I'm doing the break, so, so so I, I will give you a minute uh, or, 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 or two for, to, to ask uh, any questions that you might have. Uh, and just um, one more thing about Verica. So uh, we are the uh, company created by the original creator, creators of uh, Apache Flink. Um, and we uh, provide tool, a number of tools to, to help bring uh, stream processing into the enterprise. Uh, and those product, products are such as uh, the streaming ledger, which provides uh, um, ACIP transactions on top of the Flink, uh, which is a, like, the, the, the stream uh, processing engine, as well as um, application manager, which um, makes the, 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 the operation, operations uh, of Flink jobs and life cycle management of, of uh, Flink jobs much easier. Um, Coming back to the topic of uh, today's presentation, um, I would like to start uh, with sort of a thought experiment um, and just just um, think for a second why uh, so many people like uh, SQL and why so many um, engines uh, provide um, SQL or SQL-like um, la language in their um, frameworks, and um, uh, what what I personally think uh, are the most um, uh, important uh, characteristics of SQL that that make make, make them make it so appealing uh, is that it's it's a very well known interface. Many people already know. Um, the, the SQL in the area of uh, data anal analytics. Um, it's pr pretty much, we can say that it's the lingua franca of data processing nowadays. And uh, the reason why is that, I think it's because, uh, because of its declarativity, so that you don't specify um, how do you want to get your results or how those results should be computed, you just say, um, what do you want to, to get in the end? So people writing SQL don't need to, to have any programming knowledge. They, they, don't, want, they don't need to uh, say how those computations should be performed underneath. Um, they, they just specify what do they want to, to, to get in the end. And such an approach, the declarative way, allows the, the engine, the, the, the developers of the, the, the frameworks to, to provide out-of-the-box optimizations because um, we, uh, 
know pretty much ed everything up front about the qu query and, and that that includes such such features like we know all the schemas of um, of tables of of the data that um, that the calculations are performed on top of as well as uh, we know all, all of the um, logical operations on top of that data so that we can for example uh, reorder those operations and push some projections uh, before some some other ones or for example or even uh, push uh, some parts of the graph into external systems uh, and that's i think is it's a very prominent feature of sql or um, relational uh, languages um, another um, very um, beneficial thing that comes with sql is that we can have a unified way uh, of dealing with both bounded and unbounded unbounded inputs so that or uh, in other uh, words with the, the, the stream and the batch um, computations um, so we just have the same query executed um, in different um, in different environments I would say I'm not gonna go into details how how the, how uh, the, the, the streaming or unbounded 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 operations are um, performed in, in Flink SQL. If you uh, want to, to um, get some more insights on that topic, I highly recommend uh, one of the previous webinar by, by Fabian. Um, there's a link in the presentation, but also uh, it's available on the resource page on ververica.com uh, if you're more interested in uh, that specific topic. Um, but coming back to uh, to 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 to, uh, to detecting patterns, I, I would like to to drive this this webinar based on uh, multiple examples, and um, so that we we need some um, data set that we can um, operate uh, operate on, and uh, as such, I've chosen uh, a data set uh, consisting of taxi rides in a New York City. Um, that's that's a pretty well known uh, data set. Uh, it contains um, two kinds of uh, events. Either uh, so, every event is either start of a ride uh, or end of a ride, and each event contains uh, different IDs: ID for for that particular ride, uh, ID of a taxi, uh, ID of the driver. Uh, as well as coordinates so that we can um, know where in the uh, New York City what that, that, that event occurred as well as how many pa passengers were, uh, were in the taxi and uh, I, maybe even the most important um, field is the, the, the roll time of, uh, of an event so that it's, it's in other words it's, it's just a timestamp which says when this when this event occurred um, yeah so knowing that um, let's first see um, what we can um, achieve with uh, with sql like with a standard sql and how we can um, use um, some extensions uh, needed for, for for writing sql on top of uh, unbounded streams so imagine we want to calculate um, statistics of uh, how many rides happened uh, in a certain area, and we want to have those statistics in a 30 uh, non-overlap, 30 uh, minutes not non-overlapping windows, uh, and that's pretty straightforward. Um, like it's it looks pretty much as as any um, other like well-defined and well-known uh, standard SQL. The only uh, difference in this case is the, the addition ex, addition of the tumble um, keyword in group by that uh, that says that we want to uh, besides grouping on the area ID we want to also group on um, group on uh, on those windows 30 minutes windows uh, and uh, another uh, interesting um, feature of this query is that we can um, extract some characteristics, we can 
in the end extract some characteristics of the window. So, for example, we can get the start uh, when the window started and when the window ended, as well as uh, more of a um, technical parameter the, the, the roll time of the window, basically, which uh, basically says when we can um, in further computation computations assume uh, that this this output row happened so that we for example can perform uh, another uh, window aggregations on top of the results from this query um, so yeah like as you as you may see already from the, this query uh, or just just from the feature set listed in this slide um, Flink 1.8 1.8 comes already with some uh, with quite a co comprehensive list of uh, available features. Um, so besides what you have just seen, like simple projections, groupings on on windows or non windows, uh, you can also join uh, different um, streams um, or data sets in general. So, for example, you can perform uh, windowed uh, joins as well as non-windowed. Uh, another, like, very uh, interesting feature that was um, uh, included in one, Flink 1.7 are joins with temporal tables. Uh, this is um, this is a concept of uh, joining one usually dynamically changing uh, stream of, of events uh, for example stream of um, events describing some buying some some products in our shop in different currencies uh, and we want want to enrich uh, this uh, this this dynamically changing event with um, some proper uh, properties in this case uh, with the currencies we want to extend it with exchange rate uh, that was valid at that particular moment in time that the, the event happened happened so that we are not joining with like a one car version uh, from the the, the 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 right table but we are matching with with a valid uh, value from the second table based on the, the time attribute I'm also not going uh, gonna go into details of uh, this one, but that's a very um, very um, powerful f feature that I, I highly recommend to to have a look at into the documentation or um, yeah basically just just have a look into the doc documentation. Um, another features that are available are like you can write your uh, user defined functions or just use uh, many. Uh, built-in ones um, and also in 1.7 we added the initial support of match recognize um, and extended that support in 1.8 and this uh, this is the feature that we will be most interested in during this this uh, webinar and to tell you why I think this is a very valuable addition to, uh, to Flink SQL and SQL, SQL in general um, is that uh, let's Imagine that we want to find. Um, imagine that that we want to find um, rights in our data set that had some mid stops, and by mid stops I uh, understand that uh, between the start event of a write and end event of that the same write, some additional write for the same driver started in between. So we can translate that that sentence also that condition uh, to another one that says that basically there there are two consecutive uh, start events of, of of some rights for the same driver, and uh, to be honest, I think probably it is possible to express that with uh, let's say a basic uh, SQL, but uh, at least me personally, I would uh, have problems uh, coming up with such a query and even if I uh, managed to do that uh, I'm sure it would be it wouldn't be uh, readable uh, and uh, I think this is very easily expressible in uh, Flink um, CP library and what we would have to do with uh, the, um, the Flink CP library uh, we would just need to provide a 
write a pattern that, that says that we expect two events, so that those are the uh, S and the E uh, events. And uh, both of them have the characteristic that they both uh, describe a start of a write. Uh, and we would have to apply the next operator, uh, which is just, uh, which says, says that both of them um, should um, occur consecutively so that there's no against events in between. And uh, later we would apply that pattern on top of uh, a stream keyed by the driver ID because as I said, like we are, we, we are interested in uh, those patterns only in context of, a, uh, of the same uh, Of the same uh, of the same driver, um, so uh, yeah, we would have to apply them uh, on top of uh, that that uh, kit uh, stream, uh, and um, just at the end we would just we would need to say what we want to get in the uh, in the out as the output. So in this case, uh, just the the ID of the right. So as you see, like that's that's very simple. Uh, to, to to write in uh, in CP and, um, and that's not very um, very easy to do with with a plain SQL and that's why uh, SQL, SQL standard 2016 included uh, the extension of uh, match recognize um, yeah. So, as the standard um, says, um, the, the common use cases and the common um, common re the, the reasons be behind introducing uh, this clause uh, are such use cases as, for example, stock market analy analysis, where we want to look for um, trends in our data. So let's say we want to, for example, to find, uh, look for some periods of um, ever increasing values of, of stock um, stock tickers, uh, followed by some, some period of decreasing. Or for example, when we want to, to, to analyze or look for uh, some patterns in um, events of, of how our customers behave, for example, in an online shop, uh, so let's say we want to, to be notified whenever um, a user, for example, clicked some ad and uh, bought that uh, product that, that was advertised in there. So like the, the common, um, common feature of all of those use cases is that we, uh, we care about the order of the events and we want to find some uh, correlations, uh, some known correlations um, in, in sequences of ordered events, and that's where the, the match recognize comes in handy. And the, the, the place where the, the match recognize is apl applied in, in a SQL query structure is just, uh, it's always applied to the um, table in from clause. Um, so it's just before uh, any filters or, or group bars, it just it goes. Uh, it's it sort of extends the, the the definition of a table. And to 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 show you how we can uh, implement the, the previous feature of uh, finding um, rights with mid stop with uh, match recognize. Uh, so on the left you have the the, 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 the the required query and we'll go through uh, all of the the, the, the sub clauses um, of that query so first we have to uh, define the partitioning of uh, our data so as before we want to uh, only look for patterns in, in context of a driver uh, so we say say that we want to partition our data by driver ID then, uh, this is very important that we have to um, specify the order of our events. As I said, like the, 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 that much uh, recognized um, really uh, works on sort, sorted events. Uh, so we have to provide always provide the, the ordering. Um, and as the first parameter, uh, we have to provide a time attribute um, because that, that works on, on streams and uh, we, um pr primary we have to always sort by 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 the either pro processing time 
or even time of uh, of the events. And later on, we can uh, move on to the uh, most important and uh, most important part of the match recognize. So we define our pattern. And um, as before, we just say that we are we want to look for patterns consisting of um, two uh, events, mm, two rows in this uh, in the, the SQL wording. Um, we can name them arbitrary. So in this uh, in this case, I, I just named the first event S uh, and the, the the second one E. And in the defi define clause, we uh, define what conditions should uh, a row um, fulfill to, to be uh, mapped to that uh, pattern variable. And in this case, as before, we just say that both of them should describe a start of a write. And um, lastly, we uh, in the measures clause, we say what we want to get uh, as the output of our uh, query. So in this case, we uh, just want to get Right ID, so we can extract that from uh, any of those uh, two uh, pattern variables. Um, yes, and um, before I'm gonna go more into details um, on of different clauses, and, and uh, to, we'll, before I move, we'll move to um, next examples, if there are any questions, then I will be, uh, to this uh, part, I, I'll be happy to uh, answer them. If not, then uh, I'm just going to move on. Uh, so if there are any questions, just ask in the Q&A panel or uh, chat. Um, yeah, just going to wait a few seconds. Okay, I think there are no questions. Um, if, the, if there, are, uh, if some some will pop up, I will answer them um, them later. Um, yeah, maybe um, right now I'm gonna sh quickly show you how this uh, how this query can uh, actually works. Uh, so I prepare the the, the quick uh, de demo. Uh, so I'm gonna be using the, the SQL client uh, that ships with Flink. Uh, I hope, um, yeah, I think, uh, you, can you see the, the, the terminal? Uh, if you can quickly uh, write in the chat. Okay, I'm going to continue. Uh, never mind. Um, so um, I'm going to use a previously prepared script. So I'm not going to have to type uh, the whole uh, query. So I, I just uh, executed the query, and uh, we are uh, we can see uh, matches to that uh, rows that match um, match the, the, the defined pattern, uh, and we can uh, compare them. So we can, for example, um, check that they are correct. Let's say for we want to see all the results for the driver the driver, the first driver ID on the bottom list. Um, so let's query them. It just takes uh, a second because uh, like the, the job uh, behind, uh, behind has to be spawned and submitted to a cluster. Um, so we already get results. Uh, and you may uh, already see that the right ID, the right with uh, ID four five uh, nine um, had had an event in between. Uh, so like it's uh, there are two uh, true uh, events uh, for uh, for that driver and that that started two uh, different uh, rights before the the first one ended. Uh, yeah, so that. Just, just like shows uh, the the query. Uh, that's the, the query that we just just described. Okay, coming back to the presentation. <coughs> Sorry. 
um, going a bit more into the details of a pattern. So besides just just a simple uh, things that that we just saw that basically just just um, saying specifying different pattern variables, uh, we can also apply different quantifiers so that we can, uh, for example, say that. Um, the, the, the first uh, variable the, the, the first variable can occur um, either one or more times or uh, some, some some range uh, number of times so between uh, n and m uh, times in the in our pattern um, and uh, like the, the 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 pattern is constructed in a way that uh, those pattern variables are concatenated with uh, the um, and strict continuity so that they are always uh, they have to uh, appear consecutively uh, in the data stream uh, so there are like if, if we say s and d so that that means that the, the, there's no events in between other than that 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 those that were mapped to either s or uh, e uh, pattern pattern variable uh, accordingly in the uh, define and measures clause, um, we so like uh, as as we just uh, said that in the measures clause we define uh, what what should be should, what sh do we want to get in, in the output and um, it's it's sort of uh, similar operations to to a projection in a simple uh, sim uh, in applying SQL query. Um, and uh, the output schema of our of the whole match recognize always consists first uh, of the partitioning columns. So, like b besides what's uh, defined in the measures clause, we always get as well the the, the rows that were uh, defined in the partition by clause. And right now, the only uh, supported mode. Uh, that the, the, the SQL standard um, describes is the, the one row per match, so that uh, it produces only one uh, output uh, per match, um, rather than uh, so the, the other one which we don't support, but it's all also uh, usually described as just a debugging mode, is the, the one that even if uh, some row didn't uh, uh, finish, uh, so like it also emits um, it all emits for every input row that that uh, that was mapped to 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 a whole match uh, in the output we also get uh, get a result so basically we for every incoming row we know in uh, in which part of the the match uh, we were uh, in the defined clause um, if we uh, don't um, so the define uh, clause basically says uh, is used to uh, define um, conditions on the on the pattern variables, and uh, if we don't uh, specify any uh, condition variable for one of the pattern variables that we defined previously, then uh, by default uh, the true conditions true condition will be used so that uh, every row. Uh, will be um, considered mapping to that pattern variable. Um, yeah, so that's like a little bit uh, dive deep into uh, those clothes. And let's say how we can use th that extended knowledge for some um, other use cases. And also, um, I think those, uh, in particular, this one, this uh, one. Uh, this example will show you how easy is it, it is to, to uh, adjust our query and still the, the query is uh, readable. Uh, so for example, imagine that rather than looking for uh, writes with just uh, one uh, mid-stop, we want to look for um, writes with multiple uh, mid-stops so that uh, no, there's no, it's not enough any longer to look for two consecutive events that, that describe a start of a write, but um, like between the start and end of the write, we, we want to look for some other events in between. Uh, so what we have to uh, change uh, in a, according to the previous query is just we want, need to add in the pattern section <clears throat> that 
additional pattern variable between S and E and adjust a little bit the define section. Uh, so now, um, now the M uh, stands for events that um, have different ride ID than the start of the of a ride, and the E even um, is, uh, is is the end of the uh, the same ride that 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 was mapped in the S pattern variable. Another um, interesting addition in this case is that we. Um, Added, we can also apply uh, use aggregations uh, in our queries. Sorry. Um, so, for example, in this case, um, we can uh, count how many mid stops there were. Um, so we can uh, just apply the, the aggregation um, to some field of a pattern variable, and this way we can, uh, in this case, uh, count how many times this uh, this pattern variable, um, how many rows were mapped to that pattern variable. Yeah. Um, moving on to even more complex example, um, that's, that's a very common uh, use case in, um, in stock market analysis. So uh, we, as I said, that, that we, uh, we you, quite often frequently want to look for uh, some periods of ever increasing uh, value and then uh, for example some um, decreasing so it's um, sometimes uh, called the looking for v shapes in our um, in our in our data so uh, in this case um, in this example uh, we would like to search for so-called rush hours in our data set of taxi rides. And by uh, rush hours in this case, uh, I understand um, that um, in particular area, uh, there were 30 minute, four 30 minute windows with um, always increasing number of rides in that area followed by two um, 30 minutes windows uh, with decreasing value of rights. Uh, so we are not, for example, looking for just uh, temporary spikes. Uh, so it's not enough to have like a, uh, just a one um, 30 minutes window with uh, hugely increased um, value of rights comparing to surrounding um, windows. And to do that, we can, uh, for example, reuse um, our previous, the, the very uh, plain and basic um, query uh, that also shows that we can integrate the metric nice with other parts of, uh, with other uh, queries or basically any, any other goodies of, of, of SQL. So uh, for this example, we'll create um, a view um, which behind which uh, the, the, we have the, the previous query that calculates um, statistics per, per area. And uh, we can apply uh, much recognized on top of that uh, view. Um, Yes, and as you as you may already notice, this uh, this query is much more complex. Uh, we changed the pattern so that for now we are also using the quantifiers. Uh, so we say that um, first the up uh, pattern variables describes the uh, the rising part of the of our uh, V shape. So we say that we will expect at least four um, windows uh, with uh, that that they will have an increasing number of uh, passengers and then we expect uh, at least two uh, windows with uh, decreasing value and how we ensure um, how we ensure that the, the value of uh, the number of rights increases is that we can um, mm, we can do that with the help of the so-called logical offsets. So we just say that 
uh, we use the function uh, last, which says uh, that uh, in this case, that if the up write count uh, is uh, bigger than uh, la the last one uh, already mapped. And the same applies, for example, for the uh, down, but in this case, we ex expect that uh, the current down write count is uh, less, is uh, smaller than the previously accepted one. We can as well access, uh, use those functions in the measures clause so that we can access different, um, different parts of, uh, of the match uh, using those queries. So in this case, we want to uh, get start of such rush hours as well as uh, the end of those uh, hours. Uh, yeah, those uh, rush hours. Uh, and so in this case, we are using the first of uh, first start time of uh, of, of the up uh, pattern variable as the start, and we use the last the end time of the last row accepted to the um, down section. We can also use aggregates in here um, as as before, so that we just calculate all the rights um, in the in the whole rush hours. Uh, period, um, so we can also like sum uh, all the the right count of all rows map to the pat up uh, pattern variable as well as um, all the right counts of the um, all the rows map to the down pattern pattern variable. Um, yes. And uh, that's I, I understand that that might be overwhelming, uh, like how those uh, which rows uh, are uh, mapped to to, to what uh, pattern variables and how those uh, aggregates or conditions work on those um, those rows. Uh, so just to to like outline uh, a few rules how um, what actually a price for example means. So uh, a, pri a price, describe uh, the, the a price or like any b price or something like that uh, always describes a set of rows mapped to 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 a certain pattern variable plus the current one. Uh, that's that's a very uh, important feature and it's very handy, especially in case of aggregates, so that uh, we can. Uh, just saying sum a price, we can um, already account for how the current row uh, will um, change uh, the, the value of, of, the, of some, some aggregate and we can reuse that, we can use that, um, that in, the, um, in the measure, in the defined clause. So for example, we want, to, we can say that we want to um, map uh, as many rows to let's say that the first pattern variable until um, until the, some aggregate of that of those rows will exceed some 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 threshold, and I'm gonna show you that uh, just in a second. Uh, but that like that wouldn't be possible if uh, the, the current row wouldn't be uh, already um, assumed to, to 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 be in that set described by, um, for example, a price. Um, and just um, another um, functionality is that we can also don't uh, prefix uh, fields with uh, pattern variables. So we can, for example, say just uh, sum the price, and that will uh, just mean that we uh, we get that price field from default pattern variable, which is a star, which is uh, just expanded to. Uh, to all pattern variables, so basically, sum price mean means that we want to uh, calculate sum uh, of all uh, rows mapped to the current match plus the current uh, plus the current row. Um, and uh, going uh, back also to the um, logical offsets. Uh, so we can use the first and last uh, functions uh, to iterate uh, within those sets uh, and uh, we can either offset those sets from from the beginning or from the end of of such set 
Uh, that's also how we did that in the, the defined clause in the previous example. Um, and we can, for example, in a single uh, in a single pattern variable navigation function. So within the last, we can um, use expressions, uh, different fields. But uh, the important thing is that we can um, use uh, expressions only uh, from the same uh, pattern variable. So it's not possible to, for example, to, to say A price times uh, B tax. That's not uh, possible. We always have to um, navigate within a single um, single pattern variable. I mean, not a single pattern variable, but a single set. And that, that co corresponds to, to a single pattern variable. Uh, and to show you um, how we can use those uh, aggregates um, in the defined clause, um, imagine that uh, you would like to uh, introduce uh, a policy in our um, taxi company that uh, that says that we um, allow our drivers to um, to drive only for six hours uh, in any within any uh, 24 hours. So it th this is a slightly different from um, a regular. Windows definition because like windows are always uh, aligned to, to 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 either a day or or an hour so they are they are always uh, aligned whereas uh, in this case we want to uh, just say that there there are, we cannot choose any uh, twenty any twenty four hour period that that uh, that have um, that the sum of all the rights of a driver exceeds the, 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 the six hour limits. Uh, so like there's, we can assume like the, 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 the moving uh, window that groups uh, of a, like a moving window um, the, that uh, says that whenever uh, the, the sum of all the right, sum of duration of all the rides exceeds six hours, we say that the driver is already uh, tired and we should, for example, say send him uh, some notification so that he just get some rest uh, and start working um, the next day, for example, or after um, some some additional uh, time and to do that first we have to uh, calculate uh, durations of our uh, rights um, that's uh, that should be easy from uh, from um, already knowing um, with the knowledge that we got from the previous examples um, so we as before we just uh, look for for a pattern cons consisting of two pattern variables s and d uh, they they describe start and end of a right uh, of the of course the end of the same right uh, and uh, this time we just emit uh, additionally we emit the right duration so basically the time difference between the roll time of the start event and end uh, event um, and important thing uh, in this um, case, in this query, is uh, that we can also emit the roll time uh, of a match. Um, similarly to the group windows that that emits uh, sort of a technical um, uh, additional field uh, that that uh, describes when that when we can assume that that. Uh, row that match happened, uh, so we can uh, apply subsequently um, a, a, another match uh, recognized clause. So we create that view, uh, and on top of that view, we can uh, write our um, our final query. Uh, and in this case, uh, you may uh, see in the define clause uh, that we define the so. Uh, in the in the pattern uh, first we define um, just pattern variable r that has to um, occur at, at least once 
And in here, you can see additional question mark. In this case, it means that um, th this is a re reluctant quantifier. So we are not looking to the, for the longest uh, possible match um, that, um, uh, that fulfills all the conditions uh, that we defined, but the, the shortest one. Um, because like for the uh, for this particular use cases, we want to be notified as um, as fast as possible, as uh, as soon as the the driver exceeded our limit, rather than let's say just just spotting that after I know 24 hours um, constant work. Uh, so that's the, the, the pattern variable. We also add the within clause so that the whole uh, pattern, the whole the pattern has to happen within a single day. And that's that's um, that's our like um, requirement that uh, this this limit has to be exceeded within one day. And in the define clause, we use the uh, aggregate function sum on top of um, write duration. We don't, as you may uh, notice, we don't specify any pattern variable because we want to mm, calculate the sum over all um, all rows mapped to that uh, that variable, and we want to say that uh, the, dura the, the the whenever this um, uh, this sum exceeded the, the value of of two hours, then we want to uh, generate an output row. Um, yeah, so that that just like um, that that accumulates the results and uh, evaluates the condition on top of that that uh, let's say uh, sliding uh, aggregate. And to show you how that, I would like to show you how this this works. Uh, I'm gonna switch to the uh, the terminal, um, and uh, we'll just quickly uh, first we create the the view with the rise durations, um, and later on on top of this uh, this uh, view. Uh, we can apply our query that will look for driver's fatigue. Yeah, the only difference uh, between this this query and slides that we are looking for, uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, for um, whenever a driver exceeds the, the, the six hours, there there's a mistake in the, the slides. But um, yeah, sorry about that. I'm, I'm gonna fix that when publishing the slides. Uh, okay, th this. Um, Takes a little while to 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 to, to submit uh, the job as as before. Uh, okay. And that's that's the, uh, the always the problem with uh, live demos. Yeah, we we got the uh, uh, first results, um, so we can, for example, look into results of uh, of uh, one of the drivers. Um, so you, you you can see already that like we we have the calculated calculated total uh, duration of of uh, of all the rides between. Uh, within uh, within those periods, uh, so let's say we want to look into the uh, rights of the second uh, driver to check out if uh, how how they look like. I think probably because of the video that we are recording, it's a bit slower. Let's 
try without the second query running. Okay, yeah, so, sorry about that. Um, yeah, you can also check that uh, in the, the, the SQL uh, training. Um, let me just quickly go back to that presentation. Okay, I saw the error. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I saw that there are questions. I'm gonna answer them just just in a uh, just in a second. Um, so so yeah, just just um, a bit of a uh, summary. Um, uh, so the, the, the all of all of those features, most of those features were introduced in in uh, the 1.7 versions version. The aggregates were added in uh, 1.8. Uh, and also the, the time attribute extraction was uh, added to in 1.8. Uh, and the, uh, there's also the very interesting uh, uh, after match uh, skip um, clause, which allows to, to to define when we want, uh, where do we want to start uh, our next. Uh, our next uh, match, and uh, that this way we can also say um, to how many different uh, matches a single row can can be mapped, and so that we uh, so that uh, we can control if if a single match can um, can be belong to different uh, matches or just a single one. Uh, yes, and to just if. Uh, just in, uh, I, I understand there were uh, a lot of things uh, at the same time uh, described in here, but the, the most uh, important ones that I would like you to, to get out of this presentation is that uh, the, the, the match recognized opens uh, SQL for some for additional new use cases that assume the order of, of events uh, and the use cases that we want to look for some correlations between uh, ordered um, sequence of events. Uh, this uh, allows to, to reduce uh, SQL uh, features, so it's uh, integrated just within SQL. We can mis mix and match uh, any, any features. It is available uh, in Flink since uh, 1.7 uh, with uh, important additions in 1.8. And if you want to um, just, just um, Play with it uh, yourself. Uh, I recommend trying the, the SQL training. There are uh, two exercises also um, uh, about uh, the match recognized clause. And um, coming back to, because uh, I saw there are some, there's a question. Um, what about late events? Can we handle them or are they dropped before as we have to assign watermark? So the answer is uh, that um, unfortunately we can't uh, sort, uh, we can't um, do anything about uh, late events. Uh, like we, the, this is uh, a special case. Uh, so, so uh, yes, the, the late events are basically dropped uh, whenever we assign watermark. Uh, this is because we um, operate on top of uh, like ordered events. Uh, so it's not just um, uh, we cannot just um, like add um, add additional um, increment one single aggregate because if, for example if uh, some late event uh, came with uh, that would uh, break uh, our uh, match in between then that's 
basically not possible to do. Uh, so there's like no way to retract uh, previous uh, events because like the whole structure um, of the the underlying underlying state machine is would be uh, basically broken by 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 a late late event late event. That's why all late events are unfortunately dropped. So only like events that. Um, uh, that match with the watermark uh, watermark strategy are are handled. And uh, another uh, question is uh, if we can uh, is it possible to have a watermark for each uh, partition column? Um, so uh, no, unfortunately, uh, that's not possible. Uh, like we're th this uh, this clause doesn't introduce uh, like any additional mechanisms to uh, basically it's it's built on top of all the available mechanisms in in Flink. Uh, so and because Flink don't support uh, Flink doesn't support uh, um, per key watermarks, uh, so is uh, the the match recognized. Okay, if there are any other questions, then uh, I'm happy to answer them. Okay, then uh, thank you very much for, for joining uh, the presentation and for your attention as, uh, as I already, uh, and as I previously said, uh, that the video is gonna uh, be made available on the barverica.com uh, page um, and as well as the slides uh, in the resource sections. So uh, once again, thank you very much uh, for jo joining uh, and uh, goodbye.